how God works in your life. How God works in your life. We, we have these things uh, that we would love to see changed. What I wanted to point out tonight and, and what, I, what I wanted to study, it's very much a topical lesson, um, but I, I want to talk about five tools God uses when he works in your life. Because uh, we have these things we want to change. We want to see God work and change these things. But I want to just give you some insight from the scripture of how he actually goes about doing that. How is that change going to happen? Five tools God uses when he works in your life. And if you do uh, take your Bible out, we're going to read these passages. Uh, the first passage is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 11. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. The first tool that God uses to work in your life is time. Time. Uh, I, I read this book, Ecclesiastes, recently. It's, uh, if, if you ever want to look at a book that is very reflective about life as a whole, it's Ecclesiastes. And you've got this guy who, he says, I tried everything there was under the sun. I mean, I tried it all. He talks about the servants he had and the entertainment he had and the places he went, all the things he did. And he starts to like summarize like things he, he has learned. And this whole passage of Scripture is saying that everything has a time. Uh, but the point of this passage is that God is the controller of when those things come to pass in time. Uh, when, when God wants to change things in your life, oftentimes he just uses time. Uh, I, I learned that God is, he doesn't work on my schedule. He doesn't work on our schedule. We, we oftentimes say, God, this thing, I want it to change, and it needs to change this week, like today. We're looking for this miracle, uh, change it around, turn it around. But often God works by giving us time. Uh, In James chapter 1, verse number 2, the the Bible says, uh, and you all have been going through James, correct, in here, at least for a week or two. Uh, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. This passage isn't talking about temptation as in sinful temptation, but the idea is difficult circumstance. And uh, the the Bible says about your difficult circumstance, when you fall into it, not if you fall into it, but when, when you've got this stuff going on in your life, uh, know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. See, God, when you have a difficult circumstance, often he uses the tool of time because he wants you to learn patience. It's not always going to happen right now. And sometimes what we're asking God to to take away immediately, you know, we hit some sort of crisis, uh, a diagnosis, a sickness, a financial struggle, uh, some relationship problem. We face this struggle, we hit the crisis, and we say, God, take it away. We want it to go immediately. But most times, it stays a lot longer than we want it to. Sometimes it stays forever. And, And what happens is God gives us time to be in the trial, Because at the beginning, we're shocked. We're like, how is this happening to me? I can't believe this is happening to me. How am I ever going to live with this? This is the worst thing ever. And as you have time, you realize that you're going to have to figure out a way to live with this. That God, you got to figure out a way to rely on God in this. And the Bible says that he tries your faith and your faith works patience. And that we need to let our patience have its perfect work. Meaning there's a job this time is supposed to work in you. There's something that it's doing in you, and it says that you would be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The trouble that we have, the things we want to change often, they're going to be around for a while. And God wants to use time to teach us patience. See, we, we get through that time of crisis, and we have some time to really reflect on what it is that's actually happening in our life. You know, um, we, we've had a number of things go on in our life. You got our, I could tell you a story about the boys and everything. And you, most of you know the story about our boys and the disease that they have. But the idea is when it first hit us, it was a shock. We're like, what is, what is this? And we're sad and crying and you go through this grieving process and it's like, what is happening here? 
Well, it doesn't, hasn't ever gone away yet. It doesn't, doesn't leave. Um, we, we hear weekly the stories of Pastor Tony, and some of you are in his life group and, uh, of uh, Logan and what's going on in his life. And, you know, we wish that God would have, you know, we all showed up at the hospital to pray. Man, God would have just taken that away, but he didn't because he uses time. Throughout time, God works things in us. He allows us to pray and learn to trust. And now the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom while you're going through these difficult temptations, these difficult trials, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. It gives us time to say, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're doing. I need wisdom from you. Does that make sense? You realize that? Uh, we just, God, it, some, something on your list here, it may be the worst one on there. And you may be like, I can't wait for it to go away. But God's going to say, not yet. You need some time. Time to think, time to pray, time to consider your relationship with God again. Oftentimes he uses those things in those circumstances. So God, he uses time to change our lives, to work things out in us. Uh, here's, here's our second one. Uh, I got a verse, another verse. Ephesians 4, 32. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that on your card, probably there's some sort of relationship issue that you have on there. Relationship with a family member, a child, uh, some, some sort of romantic relationship, maybe, I don't know. Um, but when we have an issue, a, a conflict with somebody, we often think that time is the solution. We, we often think that if we just like don't talk about this, it'll just go away. It'll just brush it under the rug. You know, time, uh, you ever heard that phrase, time heals all wounds? That's not true, <laughs> okay? That's just not the case. Uh, there's a lot of cliches out there that just aren't true. Uh, relationships are hard. Family is tough. But what do we do when somebody wrongs us? What, what do you do? See, how, how does God bring change when the change in our minds is their problem, Right? Because oftentimes what we're waiting to change, God, just change my wife or my husband or my friend or my whatever. and Change my kid. Just change, change them. Change them, God. Please change them. Change my dad. Change my mom. Whatever. One way that God changes things in your life, and one tool he uses is the tool of forgiveness. The tool of forgiveness. Often, it's not so much that God is going to change them. They may never change. And what's not needed is even time. What's needed is forgiveness. You understand? Uh, we, we have this uh, terrible root that can grow in us, and I've experienced it. It's called bitterness. And we get this bitterness, and we, we say, God, I'm just never going to talk to them again. I'm going to write them off. Or God, I'm just going to leave them in the dust. I'm, or I'm just, hey, I'm just going to, hey, we just won't talk, or we won't be close again. Well, that's just not how God wants to work in the Christian's life. Colossians 3 says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel, that's a fight, a conflict against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now you tell me, how did Christ forgive us? Did he forgive you of like everything? Yes. Yeah. Were you like kind of bad or like really bad? Listen, Christ forgave us completely. He didn't ask, he didn't have to work for it. We didn't have to, we, we didn't even have to like, we don't have to make amends. We don't have to do penance. We don't have to like come to him and say, I'm like just beg him for forgiveness. He, he died for us while we were yet sinners, right? And the worst of our worst of our worst, he said, I'm going to choose to love them and die for them. So that's the principle here. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Yee! Uh, Colossians 3.13. Colossians 3.13 and then Matthew 6.14. But the Bible is serious when it comes to forgiving others. Uh, it, it doesn't leave Christians any room to say, nah, no thank you, I'm not forgiving them. I'm just not going to talk to them. We often get this idea, hey, the best way to change this uh, relationship is just to end it. 
Uh, we just won't spend time with that family member. We just won't deal with them anymore. But I just don't see that as a, as a thing. Now, obviously, pending some sort of uh, physical abuse or verbal abuse, you know, God never says to like continue to let somebody abuse you. But when it comes to somebody that's wronged you, God says we should forgive. We, we should forgive. And God uses forgiveness, uh, and it restores our relationship with Him. Maybe that's one of the things you'd like to see change. You know, God's not holding anything against you. You may, you may feel guilt and shame, and you may feel terrible about something in your life that you've done. Uh, forgiveness, you, you may need to accept forgiveness, and then maybe you can give forgiveness, and you can forgive yourself. Uh, but God restores our relationship with others through forgiveness. Um, I got another verse for you here, Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, uh, the, the third tool here is the tool God wants to use is truth. God uses truth to change your life. Um, you say, how, how do I learn that I need to forgive? How, how do I learn that I don't handle things well with people in conflict? Romans 12 verse 2 tells us the way that God transforms us. And uh, in verse 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, be not conformed. That means don't, don't be pressed into the mold of the world. You know, the world has a certain way of behaving, right? And a lot of us learned that way growing up. We had this uh, old sinful pattern of how to do life and how to do everything, how to handle conflict, how to handle everything in life. We had this what, something we grew up with. But then we joined this new family, God's family. We're born again. We're made a new creature. And God says, I want to teach you a new way to do things. Well, how does he do that? He uses the truth. The Bible says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so the idea is that, you know, he, he's got many tools. Uh, mo- all of them come from the truth. But the idea is that God, he, he may want to just change your thinking about something. And that's going to change the thing altogether. Does that make sense? You may be thinking about something all wrong. You may have unbiblical thinking. Uh, Some would call it stinking thinking. You have thinking that's just, it's not right. It's so wrong. Um, So much of what we battle in our lives is stuff that has affected us for years, a way you respond or react or something you do just because it's how you learn. It's how your mom did it or how your dad did it or how your grandma always handled things or whatever. And that's something that's causing you problems right now. And you need to change that. Well, the way you change that uh, is is you you really have to go back in order to go forward. All right? Jesus wants to transform you. Well, you got to figure out what you're you're doing wrong, right? And it's going to be from the truth. He's going to say, hey, uh, your family did this. Your family handled money this way. Your, Your family processed grief in this certain way. Your family whatever. And then you're reading Scripture a different way, a whole new way. And He's going to change you that way. And it's, it's not so much that, that uh, He just like takes the problem away. He just changes your thinking about it. God wants to change our thinking. Uh, I, I read this uh, in a book recently, and it said, Discipleship requires. Discipleship is us following the Lord. That's something we're all doing, right? We're trying to follow, follow the Lord in our lives. Discipleship requires putting off the sinful patterns and habits of our biological families, and being transformed to live as members of Christ's family. You've got all this stuff from a previous family that you learn. Attitudes. You know, it's like we're inheriting heart problems, but it's not physical heart problems, it's spiritual heart problems. The way you view and handle your money. Maybe you've got something on here you're really concerned. You'd love to see your finances change. Well, maybe you need to change to the way God thinks about finances. You ought to be curious and learn some some new things. Uh, Maybe it's currently how you manage conflict in your home, uh, how you uh, express anger. You know, what does the Bible say about anger? That'd be a neat study to do. We have to realize what what God is is teaching us and be renewed, transformed by renewing our mind. Uh, what is it you believe about friendships and trusting other people? Did you grow up in a home that said, never trust anybody? Don't share anything with anybody that's going on in your life. That's a bad idea. Well, what about all those one another's in the Bible where God tells you to bear one another's burdens? What about where it says to pray for one another, to consider one another, to confess your 
faults to one another. Ah, we, I don't do that. I don't do that. You know, we need to be renewed uh, in our minds. How you manage your feelings and emotions. Uh, maybe it's your belief about success. Um, so when we realize the error of our ways, it leads us to another tool God is going to use. Okay? We, we realize, ah, I've got something wrong here. Here's my, here's my next tool. It's the tool of repentance. Repentance. Uh, John 8, 11. I'm going to read this one. You got this woman uh, caught in sin, you know. A poor lady doesn't even have a name. She's just known as the adulterous woman, you know. What's up with that? She doesn't, she doesn't have a name. She has this character quality that she's known by. Look at how when Jesus speaks to her, what he says in, in John 8, 11, she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There are all these men there with stones, ready to judge her, ready to make her pay the consequence. And Jesus wrote something down on the ground. We don't really know what it was. Some think it may, he may have written the Ten Commandments. That's something a lot of people think because they, they were guilty in their conscience. Uh, and they, they think that's what he wrote. I, I can't tell you for sure. But her, none of her accusers were there anymore. And Jesus says, I don't condemn, condemn thee either. Go and sin no more. In Revelation chapter 2, maybe, maybe your change you wrote down is your relationship with God. Maybe it's a revival. Maybe, maybe it's something like I wrote down. The, the Bible says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Revelation 2 verse 4. Because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. But when God shows you something, it's not a matter of just changing your mind. There's a next step that he is going to use. Oftentimes, the, the, in, my, in my life anyway, I don't know how to work for you, but the greatest times have changed where I felt like God really turned some things around. It was when he turned me around, when he, when he changed my heart, when it was me saying, whoa, I've got I've to revisit my priorities. I've got to revisit what I'm doing. And it's, it's repentance. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning to God. It's, it's when that change of mind, that, that renewing of your mind, that changing of the way you think gets down into your heart and it, it changes your actions. It's not just saying sorry. It's not just saying I, I messed up, but it's taking steps of obedience to the Lord after that. It's, it's repentance. It's turning. It's a change of heart and mind that results in a change of action. Um, God will use that tool of repentance in your life. That tool may just change everything on your list, you know, if you allow God to speak to you. Uh, the, the last thing here I want to look up, uh, the last verse, and someone can read this. It is Proverbs chapter 3. Does anywhere, anyone, anyone know where I'm going? What are the famous two verses in Proverbs 3? 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust. My last, my last uh, tool here to talk about is the word faith or trusting in the Lord. Faith. Uh, I really do believe that the most important thing God wants to do is change you from the inside out. Um, he's going to do that the closer you get to his word, uh, the more you uh, are open to listening to what he has to say, um, uh, not being so prideful, thinking you know it all, right? We all, we're know-it-alls until, well, I don't know, until we realize we got problems, right? <laughs> it's like, I got a problem, I can't fix it. God, what do I need to do? And, uh, but the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Give him everything. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Stop following your own ideas, your own way. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God uses the tool of faith. Here's what I mean by that. God may, God may, you may need to have some forgiveness and some relationship you have. God may be uh, using his truth in your life. 
But for many of the things that we face, and what God really wants us to do is he wants us to exercise faith. He wants us to, as the Bible says, trust him with all our heart. And what that requires of us is a step. There may be something that you're saying, God, why isn't this changing? What step are you taking to see it change? Because God, he's not, the, Christianity is not just all done in the head, okay? It's not just like, this is, all, this is all stuff we think about and feel. We think and feel, we think and feel. There's a do to Christianity. There's a do to your walk with the Lord. It's, it's trusting in the Lord. Uh, it's like when Abraham, he, he got up and he left to go to a place he didn't know where he was going. All he knew is he was going. He was called to go. Uh, you've got this idea that God calls us to take steps of faith. Um, many of our circumstances will only change as we follow the Lord by faith. Maybe this year, God wants you to take a step of faith and have a tough conversation with someone. We like to avoid conflict, don't we? Is anyone here just like, you hate it, you hate conflict? Like, you just don't want to have a hard conversation? Yeah. It is hard. It is really hard. It feels awkward. It's like, oh, man, it's going to mess things up. Oftentimes, some of the best relationships and the, the healing that you get to experience in the best times is when you have the hard conversation. You know, you, you take the, if God is prompting you to have that conversation, have that conversation. It could be a conversation with your child. It could be a conversation with, uh, ab, you know, about the Lord with somebody, whatever that is. Maybe God is calling you to start something new. Uh, God doesn't always call people to start something new in the new year. Don't feel like you have to like get a bunch of goals and and uh, uh, what's the word um, uh, at the new year? What do you call those? Resolutions, right? Some of you earlier said you don't like those. Forget the resolutions, right? Unless God is calling you to start something new, and then you don't have to wait to the new year. You start. You start. You st- take a step. Just one step. You take a step, and you take a step, and you take a step. Start something new. Maybe. Uh, you need to f- follow the Lord's guidance and go to counseling. You ever thought about that? This is something I, I, I believe in more and more. Uh, I, I've been a pastor here for seven years. Seven, that's, like a, that's like a number of maturation, right? You mature, I'm a mature pastor here. Um, more people need to go to counseling, uh, We all are just messed up people a lot of times. And you're messed up, huh? A godly counselor, yeah. Uh, You don't find godly counsel at a bar. Where else don't we find godly counsel? Take it from the crowd. Uh, At work oftentimes, right? Coworkers sometimes. Maybe maybe you find a good counselor there. I'm talking about somebody that is mature, older than you, wiser, knows the Lord, and has some actual training in counseling. I'm talking about somebody... Get rid of this stigma of like, oh, I'm broken. I got to go to a counselor. You are broken. And you probably, if you have a problem that's lasted for years and years, need to go to a counselor, okay? I'm telling you. Uh, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. You say, I don't know what God wants me to do. Maybe you should take a class. You say, God wants me to do something. I don't know how to do it. Well, take a step. Take on a new responsibility. Maybe you say, God is leading you to do something at church or some ministry or otherwise. Well, ask for more. Ask for more responsibility. Don't just wait. Uh, I, I did a, a study. I think it was in here. It might have been on a Sunday. I don't remember what it was, but uh, it was the concept of no accidental disciples. And I thought about this in college a long time ago. It's like nothing that God is asking us to do just happens on accident. You don't just fall into being a student of the Bible. You just don't fall into being a prayer warrior. You just don't fall into having great kids. Like, you have to intentionally plan to do it. And you do it based on God renewing your mind through the truth. He shows you what's wrong. You repent of your ways, and you take a step of faith. That's how he works. That's how he changes us. And and we need to, to do that. And so, Maybe God's asking you to do something more. Take on something. If we have this thing here at church uh, we call our discipleship path, and we say worship, grow, serve, and go. And everybody be attending church. If you're not attending church faithfully, well, maybe you should do that, right? Maybe you should just consider, well, what if I didn't only go once a month? What if I went every single week? What a fanatic, right? What if you went every week to church? 
Just think of what that could do in your life. You say, all, that, all these problems, I just wish I could hear God. Well, go to church on Sunday, right? We all can do that. Uh, maybe, maybe you take the next step. Maybe you're already going to church. And the step is to grow. We grow together in groups. Maybe you say, I just I feel all alone in my life. and I'm going to church, and I just don't have any friends. Well, we have stuff for that. They're called groups, life groups. Like, go to one. Just try it. It might be scary. Yeah, if you don't know how to, which one to go to, like ask me, I, I'd be glad to help you. Um, Stacey McMunn, that's, her whole job is to help people get connected to stuff like that. And, and so consider uh, a group. The third thing is serve. Maybe if you've just been attending church, maybe God wants you to do something at church. I know he wants you to do something because he gave you a spiritual gift. He wants you to use it. So use it. Find out what it is and use it. And then the last thing is Go. We talk about going. Who is it? We say, ah, I want to be closer to God. Well, what did Jesus come here to do? <laughs> Seek and to save that which was lost. Well, what, who are we supposed to emulate in our life? You say, I want to be a successful Christian. Well, that means we ought to be telling people. We ought to be witnessing. We ought to be going. So, you know, it's not complicated, but it does require some action on our behalf. We're often frustrated at the world around us. We wonder why people don't change or the world doesn't change. But God doesn't simply want to listen to our complaints about it. He, he, when, we, when we bring those to him, he's often going to call you to participate in the solution, right? He's going to call you to do something, to take a step, have a conversation, start something, whatever. So here's our tools. We've got time. God may just say, you need some time to learn patience this year. Forgiveness and your relationships. You need to ask yourself, is, is, is it me? You know, it's like, is, is, it, was it, is it me or is it you? Well, it's probably me, you know. You got to think about that in your relationships. Because you know what? We can spend our whole day, our whole life trying to change someone else. Uh, who's, who's married in here? Raise your hand. We, all, we battle with this like all the time. You're like, Oh, if only, if only, and you try to change. Well, you get the, the hard part to realize, and then you realize it, and then you forget about it. Like 10 days later, you're like, oh, man, uh, that's right. I can't change her. I got to change me. And that's where we're constantly in this idea. Change me, change me. We all have to be willing uh, to, to uh, offer forgiveness. It's a change in our heart. Uh, God changes us through the truth. The idea that we've got some things that we've been thinking wrong, and he wants to renew our mind. God will then lead us to repentance, the idea that we actually change. We actually take a turn in the other direction, and we take a step of faith. So I want you to look at your, look at your paper here. God's got some tools. You got your paper still, Janet? Okay, good. And you have notes on it now, too. Uh, God's got some tools he wants to use to change these circumstances. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you as a pastor, I could, I could just pray for you or we'll call you up and pray and your whole life is going to change in this name. But that's just not true. God works and he works in various ways, okay? And oftentimes the work is right here on the inside of us. And so be ready for it. Be open for it.